page is going to be included in the summary of these options on the board for your consideration after lunch. So what I'd like to go through now is option one, which is the addition of one fire station with a paid staff. And what I'm discussing is basically a duplication of what you now have at station D to the creation of a second identical station. Now, this also makes the assumption that you would approve the position of driver designation that is will be before you in the budget. In addition to those uh, three shifts of four personnel and, and the change of classification, would also be the addition of a shift supervisor per shift. And the reason for that shift supervisor is to supervise the two crews that will be under that person's direction for each shift. And that is three personnel additions. Um, and that will be, as you referred to earlier, Mr. Chairman, an event that shift supervisor would attend every fire and would assume that responsibility of incident commander on a fire. Um, it provides continuity, it provides supervision, it provides structure, and um, that individual would provide overall management of that group and a particular scene. That would enable those current five personnel, that administrative personnel, to provide the administrative services on a full time basis rather than attend and be incident commanders uh, and wear basically two hats. Lord, do you, do you have anything to comment on that? Anything you'd like to add to that? No, sir, not right now. I mean, it's, there's three of us in the office, and uh, one of our regular duties, we have to stop them and go also. This in no way, as the chairman referenced earlier, eliminates your volunteer needs. Uh, yes, sir. You know, we're looking at these um, options. Um, are these recommendations for those particular locations? I, 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 will go, I will highlight those that as it references to Clydeville and Venus under option one. Chad's role in this committee has been to evaluate existing stations, the potential for renovation of those stations, and or the cost of building new stations. Now, as we reference Clyde Belt and Venus, the reason those two are referenced, referenced one concept would be that you could take your current station 10 off of 84 and you can move it to, let's say, Venus. And they will operate from the Venus station. But that will require some innovation. Uh, because of the need of having additional private bedroom and uh, restroom facilities based on the makeup of your, board, uh, of your firefighters. Um, you could take your second uh, new crew and you can locate them in Clyde. That station two would require renovation. The reason you have those prepared for you as station as option one is because that is the quickest and least expensive from a station standpoint. Um, the consistency is the gear, and that 
turnout here uh, as well at this fire. It's a woodland fire. It's turnout here for structure fires. It is uniforms. Uh, the need for uh, an additional pumper, the reason that you see that 585 is because the last pumper you bought in 17 was 400 plus thousand and there's been a uh, <clears throat> there's usually about a four to five percent price increase per year. So by the time you did anything you did something you want to do that big price increase is there. Chad, can you comment on uh, the structure at both flight <coughs> and Venus? Yes sir. So uh, what we Venus was actually our first station that was constructed with the new model that was created uh, in that uh, structure we would have to go in as Mr. Pritchard stated and do some renovations to add additional bathroom and private bedrooms uh, just because of the gender makeup of the fire department as well as if you uh, still ran volunteers out of this station there would be the need for an additional office as well because you have uh, volunteer fire department chief as well as the sergeant of that station has their own office as well as some possible additional training uh, okay. so being so the client bill is the least amount that's the one that we built the latest earliest uh, it would just be simply adding another bathroom and bedroom. There's plenty of training room uh, as well as the bedrooms. Uh, Beam is the first one we built. It's got a little more, it needs a little more work done to it. As well as we're adding, the plan is to add the EMS uh, to the south side of the station for an extra bay and the living quarters. So that could be potentially incorporated in yes, sir. that kind of and also, not only just the location of being both north and south, it goes back to the call volume that you've already referenced. We've already referenced, and you have noted that those two would make that change. Uh, committee, is there anything that y'all want to add that I have not included in this? I, I, I guess I was wondering about the location of the hearing room more than people when we look at options. Uh, say, uh, you know, I guess how did you arrive at some of the, the options, uh, locations? Well, we looked at it from the standpoint of call volume, and we looked at it from the standpoint of cost. I'll say five miles. Yeah. Residential density, five miles within the station. <clears throat> A lot of the thought process of what Mr. Pritchard mentioned. Clyteville and Venus were the first two that you picked. So, for example, Clyteville. Uh, Twin Lakes, um, that area may have a slightly higher call volume, but when you look at it, all right, for, for us to staff a station in Twin Lakes, you basically have to start over, you know, tear that down and start from scratch. But you could still, with a little bit of renovation, you could very quickly staff a station in Clydeville, um, it's a lot more cost effective to renovate rather than rebuild. And you still have provided those citizens in that entire area with a lot faster response time by having a full staff station. So it would stand to reason a fire truck can get from Clydeville to Twin Lakes faster than you get from 84 Twin Lakes. So it increased the level of service, it did it in the most cost effective manner. But again, it, it, those are three of the factors that we that we looked at when um, we were putting this together. But there are also other factors that y'all may have to consider. So, but, but from the standpoint of what was the thought process and getting that on board, that that's kind of what we ended up asking the question. And, and to give you an idea on the cost that he's referring to, so to uh, build this model fire station. Uh, as it sits with parking uh, and everything like that. We would have to, we have to Twin Lakes. We cannot, there's not enough land to build a new station there. We have to find a new location and we, we can add on to that station where it sits.
it. So you're looking at about eight hundred and twenty to eight hundred and forty thousand dollars to build a new station. That's on both the stations that's on both. Yes, sir. Not counting if we have to purchase land. That's the demo cost of that existing building is needed and to build new construction. Uh, and that's that's pretty good pricing based on we, we met with architect, we met with contractor, <coughs> the prices. Uh, you take the Bema station uh, and doing the same thing with the architect and contractor, <coughs> you know, it's about $120,000 that we'll be looking at uh, to add that additional space. And, and now with the car from the horse or anything like that, I, I know just in thinking the fire and just talk uh, out of the minds that we might be considering possible districts uh, or something like that. And just thinking how the cloud will sustain itself or sustain uh, you know. Well, <laughs> along those lines, if option two, just as a hypothetical, if option two was chosen, Clydeville, Venus, and North Lambs, does that put a fire station in each one of your three districts <coughs> that you have? Yes. It would. Well, then theoretically, that fire station, if it was a paid staff fire station, then that static station could become like the command station for your other volunteer stations that you already currently have in existence. For example, if you got a station at Clydeville, most economical thing. Then from the standpoint, if you've got a strong volunteer system that's already functional in Twin Lakes, and apparently it must be based on their call volume that they're getting, you have to kind of assume that there's a good nucleus of volunteers there. Mm -hmm. May not be. Eight. Huh? You have about eight. Eight? Well, they'll have to grow it. <laughs> but I think at the same time, if you've got good representation in each one of those districts from the standpoint of a command station with a chief, with an officer in that station, then his responsibility as well could be play a large part in recruiting more volunteers for these other volunteer stations, which in North Lounge, for example, uh, you know, we would have the responsibility, theoretically, of Westside, Shiloh, and then the associated stations that goes along with that. Venus would have, certainly the Venus station, and then North Lambs, for example. I think I'm right with that one. Uh, it's, uh, there. Venus for Venus Barrett, yeah. So, so I can just kind of see where that scenario might be a good at least the first stop. But actually, I see you've got to. So, do. well, and I was just going to point out to you that um, while, and I follow your line of thinking, just something to consider. So, if you pick option two and you wanted to create a free district with a command officer, um, and you would just need to add, you need to add six more people to that personnel because that option only count, only has the one shift supervisor. <clears throat> Mr. Pritchard had brought this up to me, and I'll be honest with you. Initially, I didn't think it was a solution to some of our problems, and I don't want to get you in too far ahead. But Mr. Pritchard mentioned to me about a full-time, daytime, 12-hour shift at a station where you had paid staff that was at a station 12 hour shift, theoretically. And then the evenings and after hours, you'd have your volunteers that would then cover. Well, going back to our change in the way volunteers are today, that's when they're home. I mean, that's when they're there. I mean, that's when they're available, is in those after hours when they get home. So, but again, with a good, strong chief or officer, whatever command officer in those fire stations, then he would be able to kind of keep that coordinated and, and as much as anything, it's just to those volunteers, even if it was on a daily basis, to say, now, I'm counting on you being available tonight. Are you available? If not, then he goes to someone else and says, are you available? So that he knows with confidence that if a call comes in, he's going to have volunteers that's going to be at that station. 
I just kind of been rolling that around, thinking about that after he mentioned it, because initially, to be honest with you, I, said, you know, I don't think that's going to be our solution. Just a part-time patch is not going to, not going to fix our problem. But this, I'm, the more I go along with it, the more I can think about that it's probably something maybe to consider as we initially make this step and it would cut down on staff, correct or not? Yes. And we, frankly, I eliminated that early on in the process as a result of our conversation. Uh, and, and not only your conversation, the conversation with others, that, that was not seen as a viable option. Um, but all of these options that we have have a process as far as why you see those stations located the way that they are located. And um, Chad, when you referenced the expense on um, the two innovations, you've also looked into the potential of new construction and that new construction also on a uh, two-story because of the potential of lane restriction, correct? Yes, sir. And? So, take for instance, North Lines, uh, even though you have the potential, it cannot, our model station cannot be built on that property. If we want to build a two-story, we could, but we do not have the land to include parking as well and to be able to get in and out of the station. And we want to go two story based on the contractors and the architects of uh, expertise. It was about another hundred and twenty thousand dollars on top of the eight twenty to eight forty. Uh, some of the state some of the stations you could uh, that we have in the packet is not being able to build a model station, you could build a two-story station and still have the park. Uh, There's just a few of those. The uh, under option four, if you know West Side. West Side, well not only West Side, both North Rounds and West Side, but West Side has had renovations recently. That's correct. Uh, so the recent renovations, staff added a day room a bathroom, uh, a kitchen, and an office. A kitchenette, not a full kitchen. And those um, buildings are basically red steel buildings. They Absolutely. do not in any way resemble the uh, prototype that we discussed on Venus and or Flight Building. So if you decided to go in that direction, that would uh, require a new building. And um, then we also look at option five, and that uh, <laughs> 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 consisted of five full-time stations, the related personnel, and um, the vehicle. And you see those. Um, stations that are potential and as I've said there are justifications and reasons for those uh, stations being located there. Uh, yes sir. Well I, I just want to come back a little bit on the options to try to get some thoughts into how those options were developed. Were those options the thought process of them was was that around your current fire districts that you have now, plus the available, I mean, plus the cost of current stations that we have. So <coughs> the way that we arrived at, at that is we basically looked and said, if, if we go with full-time staff, we have a pretty good um, model to go by with the way we operate stations in that. So from an operational standpoint, if you have one full-time fire station, uh, we're basically, as Mr. Pritchard said, we're duplicating the station two. Um, the only difference is in option one, instead 
instead of hiring 12 people, which is the, the firefighting personnel, the, you know, we looked at, okay, at this point, this would probably be the most logical place to have a shift supervisor um, to uh, supervise those people, help manage the volunteers, do some of that, do some of that things for all the reasons we call it. The task that they were given was the highest level of service, the most cost effective and efficient manner based on the factors that we had, the location of stations, and that those mechanical issues, if you want to call it, were the driving factors that I asked to staff to look to. Those are the ones that they brought back. We tweaked them a little bit, and that's the form that we have presented. Now, again, this is not a recommendation for most sure. at all. This is totally facts. Sure. If you ask us how to change it, you can change it any way you want. If you ask us and say we'd rather do four, but we also want to do it instead of this way, we want to do something. Fine, here's the cost that can be associated with that. Mm -hmm. Part, part of the question that I really was getting to as much as anything is that I know what comments have been made about the future of Station 10, the role that it would play. But it is probably best equipped, the most equipped fire station that we currently have because it is now a paid station and it would be a fair assessment. So I would wonder, I know we some discussions with them that it would take on a more of an administrative role, but could it not be one of your additional fire stations that you would, it would remain as a full time, and I'm just going, you're talking about the mix, but if you threw, put that in there, you did Clyteville and you did North Lambs as a new station then you've still got 10, in my opinion, because of its proximity to 80, I mean, to a bypass. I don't know what those, and, and you know that, what those response times are, you know, how far out, if you've got a call at B, let's just say right there at the crossroad and B, so what is your response time from station 10, the route that you would take to get to the center of B? Roughly, what would that response time be? When you say the center of Venus, kind of give it the other. I'm talking about McDonald's and all that. Like Skipper Bridge. Skipper Bridge. Skip Bridge. Yeah. Okay. So, I could probably, if you want to defend it, actually, you could probably have pulled some, some reports that could make calls in the area, but I would say that um, you would probably be looking at an eight to nine minute response time. A uh, fire truck could leave that station and be at if, if it left where Station 10 is now, yeah. it would, and they got a call right this minute, it would probably take them eight to nine minutes to get to the McDonald's. And that's store. not if you're peak traffic. And I can just tell you, because actually my <coughs> they live like right off right. of there. And to be so, and yeah, see, to, to be so close to town that that would seem like, to get out on Foster Road or over to 84 takes a tremendous amount of time. Like, we know what the map looks like. It's shouldn't seem to take that long, but that's a much longer travel time than, for some reason, you kind of feel like you're driving to Augusta and you can't get there. Right, if you don't have a red light beside you. No, but there's so, there's so much traffic there because we see them coming through there. Right. And you'd be surprised, even on Venus, how both lanes stack up and they right. sit in traffic with lights and sirens on because of that concrete median. There's nowhere for the traffic to go unless somebody does hop up on it. So they, they get stuck. Sure. Back to option one and two. Yes, sir. Option one, in the addition of a full time station, looks at the possibility of moving 10 and the addition of a station. Option two, three, four, and five all leave station 10 as it is. All of them move to station 10. That's the way I understood it, that all the options move like right. the 10 would lose the Yeah. You're right. 
So I, I just wonder, I mean, I'm just trying to rationalize <coughs> the thought from... So the thought process was, it. by moving it, you would put that page through <coughs> closer to a larger number of copies. So <coughs> while there would always be that, you know, if you're, if you're in Naylor, then yeah, your response time may have increased a little bit. But when you look at, okay, how can we do the most good for the most number of people? By having, when you look at the call volume of uh, uh, the Bemis corridor and the North Lounge and, and those areas, you would have that paid truck closer to a large majority of your responses in the North End. So overall, your average response time would, would be diminished. So that's the thought. If you leave it where it's at, it's not, not a bad, it's just when you look at like Mr. Christian said, he said, okay, how can we provide the most love, highest level of service? And as we look through it, he said, okay, if we have two stations, you kind of negated the argument, you know, now you've got somebody in the south end, so it's not as important for station 10 to be there when you're on the front of the side, because you've already got somebody down there. So, Marcus, you have a question? Um, yeah, I'm just inquiring on um, Jim. Just around about number say for 15 employees, just even without them, just throw the base here. 15 employees of amount that we'll be looking at. You get to hear that after lunch. Well, I, I, you know, I don't want to the car, but before we well, but I, 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 you know, no. you gotta also think about your personnel that we also come in the family. But the point, the point is that what we want to do is after you look at these, after we get back after lunch. I'd like you all to discuss which of those options that you like. Then we're going to go to the cost associated for all of that, not just personnel, but everything, all inclusive, rather than picking item by item. Chad? To the chairman's comment a minute ago about Station 10, and Lloyd is asking me. Take off the administrative building and the warehouse, it has the same equipment. Yes, it yes. It's not any more or any less or any less. Okay. With y'all's approval, I'd like to leave it where we are right now and take a lunch break of one hour. Commissioner Marshall, would you return thanks for us, please? Still, I thank you for today, Professor Brick and the fellowship, as well as the uh, gathering of minds to make the best decisions for our fire service and all the services to families.